I don't know how to start. How do you normally start? Okay. Hello. <laughs> oh. This is FPL Raptor, who you will recognise from YouTube. <laughs> nice. Nailed it. Hello and welcome back to my channel. This week's video is a little bit different as you'll be able to tell because we have a proper setup with the right lighting, a decent microphone and a green screen. I don't know what I'm going to put on the background yet. Um, it's probably going to just be a collage of Ben Me. I think that's probably <laughs> what I'll go for. Oh my God. <laughs> if you have watched my videos for a while, you know that there was one video I did where I'd been out for dinner and had a little bit too much to drink and then I had to record a video that evening. I thought I would make it into a series. So for my first ever tipsy team selection that I've created on purpose, I've got FPL Raptor joining me, which he is absolutely thrilled about, even though he looks very serious. We have both only had three drinks and we are already quite tipsy because we are massive lightweights. But Ross is incredibly polite about my team and my strategy, yep. even though he tries to advise me as much as he can, I often don't listen. And I will say, I didn't listen to his advice where he did tell me that I needed to make a wildcard strategy. And how did last game week go for you, Ross? Let's not talk about last game week. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that in today's video. Anyway, let's get into the video before we fall out. Last game week I did pick up 63 points and for fairness to include Ross in the channel it's only fair that we talk about how many points he got and he got 37 and he did wildcard. <laughs> yeah it wasn't, it wasn't a good game week for me but we're not here to talk about that today. This is how my team looks and I would just like to say I do still have my wildcard to use uh, which is very positive. Thank goodness I have that in my bike pocket and I didn't use it in game week 25. We're four, we're four minutes into this video. Not even four, how many minutes into this video, and you've insulted me at least five times. It's because Ross sent me a voice note that was so helpful and so lovely to tell me to use my wild card. And I told Ross that my plan was to not have a plan, and Ross judged me as much as Ross ju judges people. Um, but so far, it's paying off. <laughs> but I know my luck will run out, so this is why I have called in Ross to advise me on my team. Now, looking at it, I am fairly happy. Yes, I would like more Brighton players and I would like more Brentford, well, one more Brentford player. Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> I thought you were getting rid of someone already. No, was... Ross is silently improving the team. <laughs> just get get just, rid of this. I was just switching Ward and Kepa, carry on. You will use your wild card. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust my goal. <laughs> You're going to struggle with this edit. I wouldn't, tr I wouldn't trust my goalkeeper selections anyway, so you choose who you want to pick. I cannot tell you how much relief I feel when I watch your live stream and just before the deadline you don't have Kepa in goal <laughs> because I know that is an immediate clean sheet bonus point, yeah. so we're happy. Anywho, the team. I would like, I did, in an ideal world, two more Brighton players and another Brentford player. My concern about having so many double game week players is the following game weeks. Brighton do blank next game week. I don't want to have to be juggling too many players. I also want to, so I do want to get rid of Andreas. They're playing Arsenal this week and then they've got a blank game week, but he did get two assists recently. And we know what happens when I bench Andreas. Can you imagine what he's capable of when I get rid of him? He's done so well for you this season as well. I know. Andreas has been your boy throughout the entire year. Andreas, Ben Me, and Ollie Watkins. I think that's all I text you about in Premier League weekends. <laughs> yeah. Ross had a period of time. He was so excited about Ben Mee, and I don't think at one point in this season you've had Ben Mee on your team. No, I'm just excited for you that you're <laughs> doing well. If I'm not going to do well, at least you can. Woo! Um, but they are the biggest things in my team, and I am semi-tempted to take out Haaland for Kane, but I don't know if that's just a bit of a knee-jerk reaction because Spurs are playing next game week and Haaland isn't. So where would you go with my team? So the issue that you've got and a lot of people will have is you've got seven really good attackers already. Mm -hmm. So if you do Andreas to a Brighton mid, you're going to have a bit of a benching headache. Now, Ollie Watkins is probably the obvious one to bench, but you've just brought him in and I know you love Ollie Watkins. So the issue you're going to find is who on earth do you bench if you bring in a Brighton mid? But it makes sense to at least get one more double game week player. You also only have Rashford from Manchester United. You've got these three Brighton assets, but you do also have like the likes of Salah and Haaland. So I think you might be looking at a wild card in 28 yeah. or a free hit anyway. So I guess you just focus on this upcoming week, attack it, and then see how your team looks for next week. So I think it is a Brighton mid for one of, for Andreas, but then you've got a bench Watkins. This is my issue. Although Villa versus West Ham, I don't know if I'd really back Watkins. And he did blank in the most recent game week. He has been on a very, very good run recently. 
Um, and then last week he didn't really do anything, but it's fine because we love him. Um, in that case, potentially Andreas for, this is the dilemma of the week for everyone, isn't it? McAllister, March or Matoma? I have been leaning towards Matoma and then Ross put out a very helpful thread today telling everyone that despite him having Matoma is the wrong decision, which could be a power play. You could be trying to push Matoma into the differential direction. It could be. It depends what you're looking for. Like, if you're a vibe eye test player, then Matoma's your guy. But if you're looking at statistics, then Matoma's not great. But he is very clinical. So I would probably be looking at one of March and McAllister, but I know anyone watching this is, is probably more likely to pick Matoma. I don't think you can go wrong with any of the three, mm -hmm. but I just worry that there's going to be a big swing. I, I like the fact that McAllister's on penalties. But I feel like any time you've told me that you've got a gut feeling about a player they do well and whenever I recommend you don't pick them I feel guilty so I'm gonna recommend that you go Matoma yeah I mean as you know I am very into my stats um let's have a look at fancy football hub's suggested wildcard pick because that always does kind of guide me I bet there will be a triple Brighton midfield and it won't make things any easier yeah that is exactly what I was expecting. This is frustrating because this is the team I would want, but long term, I just I think I would have such a headache. But then, if I get rid of my emotional connection to Chelsea, having Felix and Chilwell would be quite exciting. I think this is the sort of team you could build on a game week 28 wildcard. You just probably have one less Brighton asset. Yeah. So realistically, you're probably just focusing on game week 27. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, by Fancy Football Hub, March and McAllister are in there ahead of Matoma. But again, Fancy Football Hub's going to be based on the statistics and the, the data is better for March and McAllister. Mm. Who was on penalties, did you say? McAllister's on penalties. So Ma that's normally what tips me over the edge. But March is on corners and a lot of free kicks as well. So March and McAllister are on all of the set pieces. Matoma's on nothing, but he's one of the best players in that. Probably the best player. McAllister also hasn't come into my consideration at all. <laughs> I'll be very honest, it's been March versus Matoma. But now that I've said that, I feel like McAllister is going to sweep in and score a hat-trick. It's a horrible decision. I want to own all three just because I, I can't bring myself to make that decision. But the Brighton defenders are so good and you've already got Esther Pinion. Mm. This is what's frustrating though. I think for Brentford and Brighton, the fixtures are so good. That's normally what sways me one side or the other. Although, Palace have got Zaha back now, haven't they? Yeah. And I don't know how much of a threat he's going to be. That's what makes me nervous. Oh, my voice cracked. I am nervous. <laughs> Um, if we go back to my team, in which case. So I also discussed potentially bringing Kane. What are the thoughts on that? I just think that you've... I don't mind it. He obviously has the fixture in game at 28, which is really nice. If you don't decide to wildcard or free hit in 28, you've got Kane in place there instead of Haaland. Mm -hmm. I just feel like the priority at the moment is probably, at the very least, Andreas to Brighton mid. Do you have one or two free transfers? One. So is it worth a hit to do Haaland to Kane when you might even wild card a free hit next week? Probably not for me. No, and that's what's caught me out recently. I think I took a minus eight hit recently and my rank would have gotten me a green arrow and then I think I was two points off of a green arrow, which is very annoying. I just don't think I'd want to bet against Haaland <laughs> against Crystal Palace either. Crystal Palace are one of the worst teams in the league at the moment for expected goals conceded. This is the thing, and Haaland has had quite a few quiet weeks, so I'm expecting. That's a, um, a psychology thing, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> you didn't finish your sentence, so I don't know. I know. I don't, maybe I zoned out. <laughs> I think you zoned maybe out. Maybe my ADD Where, where Harland hasn't performed recently, I'm expecting him to do something. And you've said to me before, that's a psychology thing. Oh yeah, gambler's fallacy. You, you think he's due. Gambler's fallacy, I think he's due. Fantasy Football Hub, 9.9 .9 projected points for Kane versus 6.3 for Harland. So Kane projected to get an extra at least three points. The other thing is... The Forest game is away. It's at Spurs, isn't it? Yeah. And we know that Forest at home, we went to a game. And <laughs> I tell you, we were like <laughs> moving <laughs> every time someone was banging on the wall. <laughs> the atmosphere was wild. The atmosphere is incredible at uh, the city ground. So. In contrast, we went to Southampton and we whispered <laughs> because we didn't want to make too much noise. Yeah, St. Mary's is the worst stadium I've ever been to. Apologies, <laughs> Southampton fans. It wasn't the best. See, that's what kind of tips me over the edge. If I take a minus four hit with Kane, but it pays off, imagine if he is just absolutely destroying Forrest's defence. And defensively, we saw them against Everton. It was 2 all. Do you want to put Matoma in? Let's... I feel like Can let's... I afford this as well? That's another question. Put Matoma in. Yeah, you've got 6.8 in the bank. Oh. So we'd get Matoma in and bench Ollie Watkins. Sadly. Sadly. 
And then you've just got the, I guess you've got captaincy as well, you need to think about Tony. Tony. Oh, that easy. That easy. Wow, that easy. Because I like him. He is projected to get the most 11.8 points. Yeah, and I also did look at the stats. Okay. Sure. <laughs> we, we believe you. <laughs> I do like the look of this team, though. I don't think you need to do the, the Harlan to Kane move. No. You would need Kane to outscore Harlan by at least four points. Unless you know for a fact you're not wildcarding or free hitting in 28. Because if you know for a fact you're not playing a chip next week, then Kane also gets you an extra fixture next week. No, this is a very, very good point. I think. So you need, then... a, you need a chip strategy is what I'm telling you. Oh, who has gone there? <laughs> and what I've been selling her for weeks. <laughs> but it has worked out well so far, not having one. Yes. Uh, so far, though, let's not take advantage of that. Do you think, long term, it is viable to not have Haaland in your team? Yes, I think for 28... For 27, 28, 29, potentially, because they blank in 28, they play against Liverpool in 29, who are a team that are on the up and improving. Mm -hmm. Even in, I guess, 30 and 31, you'd want him, and then he's likely to blank in 32. So you could probably go from 27 to 32 without Haaland. I'm not sure I want to do that. I think I might sell Haaland for Watkins or Ian Acho or Felix in game at 28. Oh, wow. And then I'll want him back in game at 30 immediately. So making sure I sell the money in the bank to be able yeah, to Yeah, exactly. That. Yeah, you don't want to use that money in the bank and then be stuck where you can't get Haaland back. And then Salah obviously had the amazing performance against Man United, which I know is painful for you as a Man United fan and a non-Salah owner, so apologies for bringing it up. Why would you bring that up? I'm going to put Salah <laughs> on the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put my points on the green screen. Please don't. Um, do you think he has now had a resurgence, or do you think I could keep him for Bournemouth, and then he has got Chelsea City coming up, which isn't the most generous fixture, but it is a double game week. But I don't feel that attached to Liverpool players. I I I would probably sell him in twenty eight, especially if you are using a fr well, if you're using a free hit, then maybe you don't need to. You can just free hit Salah out and have him back in for the double. And then the mm -hmm. fixtures after that aren't terrible, so they do have Arsenal and they've got Leeds, Forest, West Ham. Mm -hmm. So if you're free hitting in twenty eight, I'd keep him. If you're if you're wild carding, I would probably end up removing him. Yeah. Just because the blank and then a really tricky double and then Arsenal. So I feel like it really depends on on what chip you want to play. I don't want to look. I'm like, do I look at the camera? Do I look at you on the screen? Do I look at you here? It depends on what chip you want to play. Interesting. I think I will be going wild card. I have a strategy. You do? Yeah, against... Please tell us. <laughs> popular belief. Um, game week 28, I will be wild carding. Okay. And then I am not going to reveal when I'm free hitting, because I don't know. It's <laughs> fine. At some point. The thing is, I, I think once panic sets in to my team, that's when I decide to take action. And so far, I've been very... We've gone opposite. You started off the season very slow very steady very measured i was like woo <laughs> transfers and then i've slowed down a lot and then you're taking minus 12 you're wild carding i'm panicking i'm panicking because i get red arrows every week but this week you're going to get a green arrow because also wild carders the team is set up for weeks now you're fine you don't are you even making transfers this week yeah because i only went for two brighton players on my wild card <laughs> this is why you need to come to me for advice if i feature on your channel though surely i get a green arrow it's guaranteed I have heard that rumour. <laughs> you're, you're the first to test it, actually. That's quite exciting. So we have got a team rating of 83%. I will say, last week, my I think my team, mm, probably game week rating was 93%. So we are slightly lower. But I think that is a good team. I have got the double game weeks in there. And Tony captaincy. That's what could make me stand out from the crowd, I hope. And then benching Ollie Watkins, I don't think that's going to really come back to get me. Same with Wyatt. I think I like the look of that. Would you change anything? Would you bench someone else? I'm not fancying having Ward in goal just because they're playing Chelsea. I think you've got to start Kepper, but I don't think either Ward or Kepper will keep a clean sheet there. You could start Watkins ahead of Haaland or Erdegaard, but I would probably mm -hmm. wouldn't do it. I think the team looks good, to be honest. A lot of people have points on their bench this week, especially those of us that wildcarded. I think you're good to go. It's just whether you want to do Haaland to Kane as well. I don't extra. think I will. I think wild card situation next week and then I can bring him in and potentially keep Haaland alongside him I don't know or just make sure I have the money to be able to get Haaland back once the fixtures improve yeah I think you've got everything covered you've got a Brighton attacker a Brentford attacker a Brighton defender and a, a Brentford defender so you're, you're fully covered there you just haven't maxed out on the doublers but in the single game week positions you've got the likes of Saka Rashford Erdegaard and Salah like a lot of wild carders won't have Salah against Bournemouth mm -hmm. and they won 9-0 against Bournemouth earlier in the season so I'm not going to get too confident or cocky about that one, though. Although I have been mildly cocky so far. Just a little bit. But Salah hasn't had the best season, and that could have just been one week of excitement. We all have it. We do. Do you remember that time you scored a hat-trick? 
<laughs> and then hypothetically, if I, I can't speak, <laughs> that's I the alcohol. So well. <laughs> hypothetically, if I wasn't to wildcard next week, I would only have. Oh, okay. I'd have five blank game week players. Is that are they words? I'd have five five players blanking. Sorry. What's this counting? <laughs> I was just going to get your players in position and test that theory. Are we counting Nico Williams as a player? Oh, so interestingly, he did get some minutes in the other week. So I wonder if he's just on rotation. <laughs> I relied too heavily on Nico Williams recently. Uh, against Newcastle, though, even if he is playing, I don't know if I really want him there. So you've got nine, yeah, you've got nine starting players, including Williams, eight without. You've got most of the major bases covered. You don't need a wild card here. But the thing is, you can't bench boost in 29 if you wild card in 29. Mm -hmm. So you need to think, if you want to bench boost in 29, you have to wild card in 28. Forward thinking. It requires some actual thinking this here, is rather what than I do just need. going off the vibes. It's gone well so far. <laughs> and I don't stress. Yeah, you're very good at the game. It's quite frustrating. Ross will message me during a weekend and be like, oh, your team's on this, and I have no idea. I honestly just switch off, and then at the end of the weekend, I either have half an hour, half an hour, a minute of disappointment, or a week of gloating. That's how it goes. And I spend my whole life planning FPL, and look how, <laughs> look how that's worked for me. But it'll go downhill for me. You meant for me. <laughs> Thanks. I can't think of any comforting words. Yeah, I thought you were going to be nice. That's fine. No, I, I, you're my inspiration. I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna rebrand as um, <laughs> Tips and Jokers. <laughs> yeah, nice. So that's my first ever tipsy team selection. Ross was actually very helpful. Um, I was expecting this to be a little bit more chaotic but he has now made me realise I do need a chip strategy. <laughs> but this is also the first time we've spoken at length about FPL, which was quite weird, I think. Mm. If you have enjoyed this video, please do let me know. <laughs> if you have enjoyed this video, then please do let me know in the comments. And if you have any suggestions on who I should collaborate with next, let me know. This would be quite fun to do every couple of weeks. Not too often, because I'm not a massive drinker and I am, as proven by today, a massive lightweight. But thank you to Ross for appearing on the channel. <laughs> He's very shy. <laughs> he is very good to collaborate with. It's lovely. Make sure to subscribe, like, comment down below to feed the algorithm gods. You sound like my, my dad or my mum when they're going to a shop and they're like, Yelena has a YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe. Make sure to show us some love. Drop a like, we're gonna hit 100 <laughs> likes on this video at least. Oh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. As Ross said, do subscribe, please. Do subscribe if you... Okay. <laughs> I think I'm done. Bye.